Iuntes ergo doceti omnes gentes baptizantes in nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Dear Reverend Father, dear brothers, dear sister, be faithful. In two points we shall reflect on the feasts of the Most Holy Trinity and the upcoming Feast of Corpus Christi. So we may better understand our traditional church calendar, the ecclesiastical year begins upon the first Sunday in Advent. Its three principal feasts are Christmas, Easter and Pentecost. Christmas, the birth of Christ, Easter, his resurrection, and Pentecost, the coming down of the Holy Spirit. Thus, the, the church year presents to us the glory of the Holy Trinity. It displays the charity of the Father, who sent his Son into the world, the charity of the Son, who died for our sakes, and the infinite charity of the Holy Spirit, who descends and abides with us. So the first Sunday of our, after Pentecost is dedicated by the Church to the Holy Trinity because, because this feast links all the other three together. And at the baptism of Jesus Christ, all the three persons of the Blessed Trinity manifested themselves, the Father by a voice from heaven, the Son through his baptism, and the Holy Ghost in the form of a dove. The Holy Ghost appears as tongues of fire, sometimes as a luminous cloud, and as a dove. We sometimes take for granted the simplest things, and yet, every time we make the sign of the cross, we make profession of the most important of all the mysteries of our holy religion, namely the doctrine of, of the Blessed Trinity, that reality, that mystery, and of the incarnation of our Lord Jesus Christ, who gave us himself in the most blessed sacrament by uniting all the three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost under one name, we make profession of our belief in the unity of God in three distinct persons. We believe in one God, one divine nature, not three divine natures, there's no such thing. One divine nature, and in that divine nature, that one nature, there is three persons. The first person, the second person, the first, third person. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. All right? So that's our belief, that's what we profess, and that's what's been revealed. And when we make the sign of the cross, we don't say in the names. The name indicates the divine unity, one nature, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. The name of God indicates his authority and power and that we act under his commission. In the church, we act under his commission. And in making the sign of the cross, we make profession of our belief in the blessed trinity by the words, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. And in making the sign of the cross by the very form of the cross, which we make upon ourselves, we make profession also that the Son of God, Jesus Christ, our Savior, died for us upon a cross. So we see that the, in the sign of the cross, we have a short summary of the whole Catholic faith. The Catholic Church holds the sign of the cross in great honor, and it is repeated. It's, it's, it sanctifies everything over and over again with the sign of the cross, whether it's in Mass, in all the sacraments, in all the blessings and consecrations, over the churches, over our altars, banners, vestments, graves, over ourselves. We do it many times during Mass, and we sign ourselves on our foreheads to sanctify our mind, our lips, our hearts. We can sanctify also like the priest does in an anointing, use the, using the thumb and uh, doing our eyes, signing our eyes with the sign of the cross to sanctify us and to release us from and purify us of the sins we commit by our eyes and our ears. What we hear with our ears, we can do a sign of the cross on our ears and on our, um, also on our nostrils. So by all those five senses, which when we anointed in the, in, the, in, in the anointing of the sick, that's what the priest is doing. He cleanses us uh, through the power of the sign of the cross and through the holy oils. But we can take that sign of the cross and carry on sanctifying ourselves again and again on our palms also. All right. So these are all these things, all these practices we can do. And if we don't keep it up, we'll lose it. We'll forget about all these signs. This is such a simple, easy method of praising God, of worshipping the Most Holy Trinity. Pope St. John Paul II explained the Holy Trinity in connection to the sacrifice of the Mass, said, The Holy Spirit as love and gift comes down in a certain sense into the very heart 
of the sacrifice which is offered on the cross on, in the Mass. Referring here to the biblical tra tradition, he said we can say he consumes this sacrifice, he consumes, the Holy Trinity consumes this sacrifice with the fire of the love which unites the Son with the Father in the Trinitarian communion. And since the sacrifice of the cross is an act proper to Christ, also in this sacrifice he receives the Holy Spirit. He receives the Holy Spirit in such a way that afterwards, and he alone with God the Father, can give him to the apostles, to the church, to humanity. Now we are taught of this mystery, this reality of God's three distinct persons in the most blessed trinity by Christ himself. He taught us directly and explicitly, but he was partly known in the Old Testament implicitly by allusion in Genesis when God said let us make man in our image male and female let us he's speaking in the plural as three distinct persons again when he appears to Abraham and he Abraham gives adoration and he says Lord speaking to one one as if like one being in front of him and yet there's three persons the angels usually would reject and say no I'm only an angel I'm a minister of God they did not reject adoration very interesting and there's other illusions like that in the Old Testament, but it took our Lord himself to reveal who God is, all right? His one divine nature and the three distinct persons in that divine nature. The Father, no man knoweth but the Son, and he to whom the Son shall, re shall reveal him. So our Lord himself revealed this mystery by our divine revelation to us. And that's how we know the life of God. That's how we know. Only he can explain this to us. Another, another obvious point to be often for, too often forgotten by Catholics is that each Sunday is a festival of the Holy Trinity. And every time the Mass is offered, it's offered off to the Holy Trinity. God, one God in three distinct persons. For on the first day of the week, God the Father began the work of creation. God the Son rose from the dead, and God the Holy Ghost descended upon the apostles. The apostles were authorized by God to transfer the day of rest from Saturday to Sunday because it was not so much the observance of the Sabbath as the observance of a fixed day in each week upon which God insisted in keeping the commandment. They were all the more at liberty to change the day as the old law was but a shadow of the new. And they're celebrating not just the creation, which is a great act and powerful act of power of God and love, but also the recreation, the redemption of souls from sin and that recreation is celebrated on Sunday because he rose from the dead on Sunday he rested on Sunday because it ought to be devoted to his service and because he rose then on Thursday this week we shall celebrate Corpus Christi what is it it's the body of Christ Corpus Christi body of Christ it is a day consecrated in, to honor in a special manner our Lord Jesus Christ and the holy sacrament of the altar and actually we celebrate this feast every day in celebrating the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass. So that the Feast of the Holy Eucharist, like that of the Holy Trinity, is perpetual. Nevertheless, the Church has established a special feast to honour our dear Saviour, present in our altars, at our, on our altars. And in this procession on Thursday after Mass, the Sacred Host, the Holy of Holies, will be carried in a monstrous beneath a canopy with incense, coming out of the senses, flowers being strewn on the way. And this solemn ceremony always impresses every beholder, whether it's ourselves or yourself, and everybody who sees us, to inquire at least within yourself and with, uh, among yourselves and strikes the minds of others who are, who, are, who are not Catholic, don't share the faith. What is happening? Why such a profound reverence and veneration is displayed? And that leads them to our Lord. So, in, in, and is this feast ancient? Well, actually, yes, because the general feast of the Holy Eucharist is, an ancient, is ancient as the Church. But the particular feast dates not further back than the 13th century. The festival of Corpus Christi, the Body of Christ, has been placed on the Thursday following Trinity Sunday because soon after the descent of the Holy Spirit, the apostles began to give Holy Communion to the faithful. And what must we do to honor Jesus Christ for this feast? What can we do to prepare to honor him on that feast? 
Well, wherever you are, even if you're at work, at home, studying at school, you can make a spiritual communion. Just turn to wherever he is in the church and make a spiritual communion. If you can stop by any church in the diocese and go and visit him, present the Blessed Sacrament, or you can go to the diocese and chapel, the St. Gregory's, and make adoration. It's open 24-7. It's a wonderful grace for this diocese. Not every diocese has this, uh, um, this uh, room we're dedicated for adoration. So that's how you can prepare, and also how you can honor our Lord. The Corpus Christi procession following the 11 a.m. Holy Mass on Thursday is a special public act of faith to give public, I emphasize the word public, witness to our faith in the real presence of our Lord, body, blood, soul, and divinity in the Blessed Sacrament of the altar. Secondly, to return thanks to our Savior for his extreme goodness in dwelling amongst us in our churches and blessing our streets in it, uh, with his presence. Thirdly, to ask pardon for our irreverence, for our neglect, for our ingratitude, for all the sacrileges that happen, for those who outrage him even on this day that we celebrate every year and make reparation to our Lord. So, much, so many intentions to offer up on that day. In conclusion, my dear brethren, we celebrate the two most central awesome mysteries of our faith this week. The most holy trinity adoring God's one divine nature in three distinct persons and the Mysterium Fidei, the mystery of faith, the Holy Eucharist, the blessed sacrament of the altar. We must always approach these realities and mysteries with a profound, lively faith, with humility, adoration and gratitude, for God is everywhere. And he is present in his body, blood, soul, and divinity in our churches. And as the three children of Fatima were taught, I would encourage you to pray, Most Holy Trinity, I adore thee. Or take the intro to the Mass from the, the Church's liturgy. Blessed be the Holy Trinity and undivided unity. We will give glory to him because he has shown his mercy on us. And the other prayer, My God, my God, I love thee in the most blessed sacrament of the altar. A spiritual communion, communion can be as easy as saying, Lord, I'm not worthy that you should come under my roof, but say, only say the word and I shall be healed. Come. Present. Okay? A desire. An act of desire. That's all. I'm sorry, Lord. I, I cannot receive you. I'd love to receive you physically in, in the Holy Communion today, but as I cannot come and receive you, come to me spiritually. I desire you. Fill me with your love, your grace, your peace. And then make an act of thanksgiving. He's present in you. Let us learn also from the Athanasian Creed, which was once mandated for every Catholic priest to pray it every week. How we should pray and how, how, what we should believe, the right faith in the one God in Trinity and Trinity in unity. Let us ever praise and thank God in union with the Immaculate Mother, on whom the Holy Ghost came upon and in the power of the Most High, overshadowed, and the Holy which was born of her, and to recite with her angels, she's the queen of angels, Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus. Holy, holy, holy. God bless you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.